Hello Cancer, welcome back if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy the reading, it's a general reading. So um, overall, um, bottom of the deck, we have um, Capricorn IUs. And so um, the energy of this uh, card is uh, about being resourceful, um, feeling driven, um, you know, having ambitions, having goals and um, working steadily uh, towards them in a very um, systematic way, um, laying foundations, uh, moving up in the world as associated with Capricorn. It's a very business-like sign. Um, it's also about um, harnessing your contacts, whether they are friends or people that you're meeting uh, that are influential for you in some way. Um, and it's capitalizing on all sorts of opportunities or aspects that are going to be beneficial for you going forward. So really it is about capitalizing on every opportunity and every advantage. So in the first house we have Venus, um, Venus Love. So now um, this would indicate that you may be falling in love or you may be um, uh, just in love with life. Whatever is uh, whatever is appropriate for you. So if there is somebody else coming into your life, um, Venus love brings this all in for you. Um, or it could just be that, as I said, you are in love with life at this time, and that is going to definitely be showing uh, on your outer your in your outer persona. The first house is everything to do with the self, so it's your appearance, uh, what you are projecting outwards to others, so what they see your characteristics, your personality, and what you're projecting right now at this time, your physical body, your mannerisms, um, your um, vitality, your life force, and uh, just your general demeanor. It's also your own particular self-oriented interests, uh, what's really um, appropriate for you, what you enjoy doing, and so on. And it is about your personal independence in the world, how you are making your way in the world at this time. So it's a very forward, um, you know, the, the first house has everything to do with the self. So with Venus, um, love coming in, as I say, you could be falling in love or you are in love with life. Um, um, but uh, it really is a, a, it is a love affair with all things beautiful as well. So this is the arts. Um, it's your creativity uh, or perhaps you're enjoying creative activities. It's the love of beauty, whether this is scenery or works of art or paintings or sculptures, whatever whatever it is. Um, it could be fashion even, jewelry, um, going to concerts, galleries, socializing. Um, any of these activities are all enjoyed um, in this uh, with this card. It's also about being popular. So you may be very popular at this time. Um, you could be really looking beautiful right now or perhaps you're attracting a beautiful person into your life um, so you could be looking stunning or you may be wanting to go for a makeover um, or you're having some sort of change or you're buying new jewelry something you're bringing this in in some way uh, but venus loves beautiful things and enjoys luxuries um, and loves all things um, all things beautiful it's also about um, obtaining or being charming so you know Charm and refinement is very much um, in the realm of Venus as well. So you could be aiming for this in some way. Uh, it may be appropriate for you um, at this time. Um, it's also, this card can also bring in money uh, or some kind of windfall. Um, it's also about feeling abundant. So you could be tapping into those abundant feelings um, and attracting finance, money, um, and beauty and beautiful things to you at this time as well. Um, it's very much a card of indulgence. So this is the love of luxury, sweet foods, um, and home comforts, and all, all everything related to that. It also um, does cover some legal aspects as well. So you may be uh, involved in a, a legal matter, or perhaps you are sort of uh, involved in just in some way involved in it, and <clears throat> your charm. And your ability to smooth troubled waters may be required at this time. So just see how that goes for you. Um, <clears throat> this card, this card is, I feel, going to be motivated by the changes that you will make in the 12th house, but it can also um, be spilling over into your second house, which is the house of income. So whatever you're doing to the outside of yourself, whatever you're doing in the first house to 
to bring about this tapping in of abundance and beauty and um, attractiveness or falling in love or whatever is going to more than likely um, sort of enhance your radiance. Uh, even if, it's, as I said, if it's, it's a love of life or a love of yourself, uh, loving loving yourself then really triggers everything in your life. It triggers all the best things in your life. So love yourself and then you can love others. And that loving energy is a very, it does bring a lot of radiance into you and it makes you appear radiant. So with that, then you start the, the cycle of abundance coming towards you and therefore it's going to affect your, your second house, which is the house of uh, self-worth and uh, income. So once you start tapping into these energies in your, your first house, then in the second house we have part of fortune increase. So this could be a karmic trigger of some kind setting this off, which may be, um, as I said, connected to the changes you're making or the this love of self or love of life, or it could be love of another, or, or just love coming into your life in general. <clears throat> this can activate your second house, which is your house of income. It's also the house of your self-worth, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your place in the world and um, how other people treat you and so on. It's also the house of your value systems. So what you value in yourself, what you value in others, and also um, it's the house of possessions, um, ownership. Uh, it's also the house of land, real estate and property. So um, with part of fortune coming in, increase, it's basically an increase, it's a lovely card, but you might find there's some sort of karmic trigger which which sets things off. Um, usually with this card, part of fortune, what it is, is it's asking you to look at your life and see what it is that you may have overlooked. You've got a pot of gold somewhere in the second house which has um, been overlooked. It could be something, some sort of hidden ability or hidden talent which is going to um, sort of start rising to the surface or it could be something that you know you possess you know you possess that ability but you've never really harnessed it or used it uh, in any way um, and it's about that it's about using that and actually putting the time and effort and the money towards that to enhance your self-worth to bring in extra income whatever it is because whatever the whatever the talent or the ability that's rising up um in you, you can monetize that and, uh, you, you know, harness that to bring in um, more abundance for you. Um, it's also, you may be wanting to teach or learn more about whatever it is that is rising up for you, whatever ability that may be coming to the fore for you. Um, but this card is also, if none of that is happening for you, then it could also be rewards and recognition coming to you at this time. It's about achievement, good fortune, um, and a, a general rising up. Um, so therefore, you know, you can expect your abundance to increase uh, as well. Then in the third house, we have lunar eclipse change. So um, the third house is the house of communication. Um, all forms, written, verbal, it's also body language, and it can also be the house of documents and contracts of all kinds. Um, it's also the house of short trips and journeys. So with your communication, it can be to anyone close by or in your general vicinity in your environment or your workplace or anywhere but it's uh, or even a wider audience um, if it's part of your profession um, it, it can also be to specific people so this will be um, aunts uncles cousins sub siblings uh, general relatives and it can even be your neighbors so with this uh, lunar eclipse change card coming in um, you'll have to just see how this comes out for you. It can either be a very abrupt and unexpected shift, which can be quite uncomfortable, or it could be that you are having a sort of um, mental makeover or an emotional makeover as well. So it's, it's, it's kind of got that deep realization energy with it, uh, a sudden realization, a sudden awareness, a change of attitude or a change of perception uh, going on. Um, any of those aspects could come in for you. So whatever it is, it's kind of inevitable. It's an inevitable change which you're going to be facing in this house. Um, it could be a bubbling up of something. So perhaps there's a conversation or you're waiting for news, uh, something. It's all word related. 
Uh, but you, something is, is kind of simmering in the background, uh, which you haven't really been able to deal with or hasn't been dealt with or couldn't be dealt with. Now all of a sudden it bubbles over and now it has to be dealt with. And it, but it will be unexpected and the, and the, the speed of it might take you by surprise. Um, so you're going to be shifted out of your comfort zone. It's an upheaval. Um, or it could be a really big realization about something. Um, it could be very unexpected or abrupt. Um, but it could also be unexpected news or a difficult, abrupt conversation or something that shifts you forward uh, into something else. Um, it could also be a leveling up or a leveling down um, where you are you know, having to adjust um, your circumstances or what you thought uh, or, or you know, you're going to have to adjust in some way. Um, it could also be that if you're in a relationship or you're entering into a relationship that um, that you know that the possibly if you have somebody in your life already, then there's almost like a, a new level uh, is going to be attained in that relationship. Perhaps that person is going to take it to a new level, uh, and it will be unexpected for you. Um, so that may it, it could be any one of those, but um, usually usually it's a sort of very unexpected, a kind of abrupt change, and it can be quite uncomfortable. Um, but it's designed to push you out of where you are sitting at that moment, to push you out of that. Um, it's cyclical, so it's following the phases of the moon. Normally this, um, whatever it is that goes down, uh, will occur, you know, um, sort of a, a, between the six weeks and six month uh, period. Um, so it can, could unfold, uh, unfold during that um, time. But because it's cyclical, whatever loss if you experience a loss in this house of some kind, whatever loss that you experience in there, um, it will come back to you. It may not look the same or sound the same, um, but it will come back to you and it will be better. So it's kind of a period that you just have to go through uh, as the wheel turns or as the, the moon go, goes through its phases and uh, you know deal with whatever comes up for you um, and then see how it unfolds uh, during the course of the six months. But it could just be an uncomfortable conversation as well or some kind of news or words that are coming to you um, which really um, you know perhaps didn't you didn't expect or were more difficult than you anticipated, something like that. Or it could just be a, a really Im very important realization about something. Then in the fourth house, we have Aries I Am. This is an action card coming into your house of home and family. So that's your home, your physical home, or where you're currently residing. Or it could be the atmosphere in your home or the people in your home. Um, it's also your um, relationship that you have with your family, your roots, your foundation, your ancestry, or your ethnic identity, where you've come from. So with Aries I am coming in, as I said, it's an action card. You're going to be fired up in this house. Um, you may be feeling competitive or challenged in some way. So possibly there are people in your home which are creating this energy or uh, you're perhaps wanting to do something within your home. Perhaps it's your actual home structure, renovation or some kind of changes that are going on and you suddenly get the energy now to tackle this. Um, uh, to deal with it, but it will be a bit of a challenge for you. Um, this energy is kind of no nonsense. There's no game playing. So if there is any kind of emotional stuff going on within your home environment, um, this is a get it done card. No nonsense, no game playing. You may have to take leadership in some way in your home life, um, but it's a fresh start coming in for you. Um, it's also the energy of going for what you want. So whatever, whatever it is that you, you know, perhaps just couldn't get to before or you were just waiting for the right time uh, in this house, uh, this is the action and this is the, the, the you know, you're going to feel fired up about it. Um, the best way to handle the energy of this card is to take measured action in the direction of what it is that you want or what you're trying to achieve in this house. Uh, measured action because then you will achieve more. Um, it does sometimes bring in a very quick, fast-moving energy and that can sometimes drive you, um, you know, drive you to rush around uh, and, and to make rash decisions or take rash action. Um, and that may come back at you. So rather, you know, be disciplined and take measured action, cooperate with the others around you to achieve the best possible outcome. Avoid quick temper, rash behavior or any kind of aggressive action uh, with this card. 
um, rather rather consult and go for temperance and uh, deal with things in a very uh, measured way. Uh, fifth house, we have Cancer, I feel. Fifth house is the house of love affairs. It's the house of, um, you know, uh, all kinds of recreational, pleasurable or fun activities. Um, uh, and it's uh, that has a sort of, it can have a risk-taking element, so that's gambling or uh, following the stock market, playing the stock exchange and so on. It's also the house of your creativity, your brand, your individuality or your originality. Um, and, you know, how you are um, using that uh, in, in your life. It's also the house of children. So this is uh, could be your children or it could be other people's children that you're involved with at this time. So a lot of what is going down in this house may be affecting them or you could be involved with them and it's affecting all of you. Um, so just see how you go. So <clears throat> Cancer, I feel this is a emotions are high in this house. Um, you're going to be feeling extremely sensitive. Uh, or it could, as I said, it could be your children. Um, but this is all about following your gut feels. You're following your instincts and your intuition. Because this is a water sign. It's ruled by the moon. Um, so all your emotional, uh, your emotional side is going to be on high alert. Um, it's also about your moods and this, uh, and, um, you know, the, the urge to, to be, to feel secure. The urge, uh, you know, to, um, to follow your instincts. Um, it's also um, got an energy of it uh, where you may be dwelling on the past or you may be thinking about the past or you're running your mind over memories. Um, so the past does come up with this card. Um, you can draw your wisdom and knowledge from there and hindsight from there, but don't live there. Um, you know, it can make you quite melancholy or depressed even. Um, it also could be that from a creative aspect, this is a very creative sign, it could be that you are um, starting to use your skills in some way. Um, and this could be upcycling, recycling, or dealing with antiques, things that have part the past um, attached to them. So, you know, getting involved with that, or just um, sort of handcrafts, or even, you know, sort of craft work. It could also even be... Um, a culinary, uh, nurturing, looking after your diet or your family's diet or, you know, wanting to do cooking, a cooking course or something like that. This is all about nurturing this card. It's very much a nurturing card. So it could also be that um, you may be thinking about trust issues. Perhaps you have trust issues or your children have trust issues or you're in a love affair and there are trust issues to be dealt with. You could be having a secret love affair with this card. Um, because it's a it's a feminine influence, you could have a mother figure which is prominent in this house, or female issues going on, or it could be female wisdom that you are drawing on in order to make decisions or to tap into certain aspects, uh, perhaps dealing with your children. Um, because the fifth house can also cover conception, um, that you know this 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 may there may be births of some kind coming in uh, with this house as well. It could be a rebirth or a birth of an idea or a physical birth. Um, but home and family is front and center with this. Um, and um, as I said, cycles. Um, you may need to build resilience in some way in this house as well. So, or your children need to be resilient or, or, or develop resilience. Um, because sometimes with this card, you can be overly sensitive or overly emotional and be quite touchy and crabby to be around or moody. So be aware of all of those things. Um, it also may be that you or your children or in your love affair, you may just, or, or the activities that you undertake, you may just want to enjoy some quiet time on your own, um, in, engaged in uh, pleasurable activities for yourself, you know, with, you know, with your partner or uh, enjoying recreational activities, but ones that are life enhancing and where your nurturing abilities are used. But it also will give you quiet private time to rebalance yourself and your emotions um, if they're getting overwhelming. Then in the um, sixth house, we have a lovely card. Sixth house is your house of work, workplace, work colleagues. It's also the mastery of your craft, whatever it is that you do. Um, it's the house of um, health and diet and your lifestyle. And it's the house of pets. 
So uh, sixth house, uh, this is um, quite an important card because you've got a big change coming in here and it's coming into your career house as well. So it looks like the two are working hand in hand. Your work is changing. Your career is changing. Or something is shifting within these two. One affects the other and so on. So with this North Node uh, card coming in, Life's Purpose, um, you can expect big changes with this card. Swift big changes. Um, so it could be a change of career or the work that you're doing can be changing. Um, but it's, it's also about doors opening, this card. This is about moving forward on your mission or on your path or however you view things in life. It's about moving forward onto that, uh, leaving the past behind and actually getting on track now about uh, what it is you want to do, where you want to go, how you want to get there. Um, but with this card, you're going to get an incredible boost and it's going to really bring in clarity for you, um, doors opening, um, and you'll be, and you'll find that you're, um, you've got right place, right time. So you will be in the right place at the right time to pick up on something. Um, you'll be, you kind of find yourself exactly where you need to be at the right time. Um, it's also about forging ahead with something, um, and um, so blocks will be removed, um, any obstacles will be removed. It's like a clearing of the path. And this could be a new direction. Um, uh, but there's purpose involved, there's destiny, there's fulfillment, there's discovery. All of these elements come in with this card. Um, it's also about positive karma, good fortune. Um, and um, you could also be meeting soul family. These are people that you have some sort of deep connection with. Um, they don't necessarily need to be friends or family, but they could be people that you're meeting. They're going to be very influential for you. They're going to be supportive of you, or they're going to help you in some way to move forward. And you, you know, you will also do that for them. So it's like people that you have a, it's your soul family, your soul tribe. These are people you have a deep connection with. So it's a very positive card, a very, very nice card to be having in your sixth house. Um, and it's really going to enable you and it's going to bring the potential for fulfillment. Um, from a health and diet and well-being situ situation, you can expect happiness, you can expect well-being. Um, and if you have been grappling with something, perhaps it's a health issue or a lifestyle issue, then this should clear that for you and um, you'll be able to move forward. Then in the seventh house we have Neptune sacrifice. So if you have um, got you know experience, if you are experiencing a lot of love at this moment, and you have somebody important in your life, and um, you've taken it to the next level, because the seventh house is the house of relationships, but it's close personal one-on-one -on -one relationships. So this is a committed partnership, whether it's a love partnership or a business partnership. So this is the, this is not a love affair. This is the deeper side of it. So seventh house can also be about the le uh, legalities and the lower courts as well, uh, but it's predominantly about relationships and everything that goes down with that. So now um, it could be with a significant other or you are in going into the deeper part of, a, of, a, of, a, of an important relationship which has come into your life. Um, Neptune sacrifice indicates it's got a few things, um, there's a few sides to this, but basically... It's saying, uh, I feel that it's saying to you that adjustments are required in this relationship. So you may be having some ego issues which need to be addressed now. Um, and um, it could even be self-sabotage, which you are, is like a habit, something that you're used to doing. It could be you or your partner. Um, but sacrifices may be, may be required at this time for the greater good, to, to, to make this relationship gel. Okay, so examine your egos, examine um, your motives uh, and your intentions at this time. Be very, very clear about your intentions and your actions. Um, because Neptune can, can bring in the rose-tinted glasses uh, sort of phenomenon. It can also make you subject to illusions of all kinds. So you may be thinking something, well, this is how it's going to be, but it's not like that at all. Um, illusions come with Neptune. Um, so be very, very clear about your intentions and your actions at this time in this relationship to avoid confusion or illusions uh, from taking hold. Um, it can also be that you are involved with addictive behavior with this partner. 
You could be feeling like you're under the spell, a spell, or you're enchanted. This can happen with twin flame uh, relationships, especially in the early stages where you are so bowled over by this relationship, it becomes quite addictive. You become quite obsessive about it um, until you've worked through various issues and you move past that stage. But it can be that it can be very beautiful, that beautiful, addictive, loving um, sort of quality, and it's like almost like a, an enchantment. Um, but just test that um, it, this person could be the love of your life or they, they may not be at all. So test that. Um, be very clear about your intentions, as I said, and your actions. Um, also have boundaries uh, with us. Whether this is a love relationship or a business partnership or some other close personal relationship, have boundaries in place. Um, because because of the, the the illusion quality that comes with Neptune, Neptune is wonderful for connecting to the divine. It's wonderful for imagination, for fantasy, for creating, for artistic uh, talents, and so on. It's wonderful for harnessing all that and connecting with the divine, for channeling, for divine guidance, and so on and so forth. But the the practical side of it can sometimes um, lead to confusion and illusion and even deception in some cases. Okay. So be aware, make sure your boundaries are in place um, and that you're not being an energy drain on somebody else or they are draining you because uh, that can also happen in a very addictive relationship. It can be quite energy draining. You need to pull your energy in and, um, and stand in sovereignty, each of you, to give you, each of you space to breathe and to be an individual. Um, so just see how that plays out for you in your seventh house. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the depth of this relationship. Then in the eighth house, which does continue, kind of continue on from the seventh house, this is the house of sexuality, uh, the deeper commitment between you and your significant other, whether this is a love partnership or a business partnership. It's the deeper, the nuts and bolts of this relationship. It's sexuality. Um, it's the house of endings and beginnings. It's the house of, um, uh, it can, it's got a powerhouse, there are control issues in there. It's also the house of finance, bigger finance. So this is like t uh, taxes, uh, insurances, banking and accounting, uh, legacies, inheritances, investments, things like that. Um, it's also the house of uh, regeneration or rebirth. So something can die, it could be an ego death or so it's a symbolic death and then something is reborn from that or something new comes from that. It's got that transformative energy, the eighth house. So fire element is also transformative and it's all about your desires, which is very much an eighth, eighth house thing. So with this card coming in, um, you could be taking this relationship really seriously and going very much deeper. Or you could be, you know, the sexuality is taking on a life of its own because you are now in a committed partnership, all right? Um, or it could just be that you are um, dealing with, um, you know, the, the merging of you with another in some form of partnership. Um, and it's all the nuts and bolts of that, the, the merging of the emotional and material resources. Um, or it could be some other endeavor that you're wanting to do. It could be financial. Um, but whatever it is in this house, you're, it's, you're feeling fired up. Um, and you're going to have the courage to do what you need to in this house. So you're going to be feeling driven um, to go after what you want. Uh, you're feeling passionate about it. A fresh start uh, could be indicated here. Um, it's also got the energy of clearing the landscape for new things. So absolutely blitzing away what was there. Uh, to plant for new things. Um, this, uh, it can also be very swift changes coming in for you. It's like a burning of away and the changes take place. Um, it could also be just that in this house you need to be honest. You need to get your cards on the table about something and get up front with somebody possibly, but certainly cards on the table, be honest and direct. Um, it could also be that you're dealing with egos uh, in this house, either yours or somebody else's. Um, and uh, they could be quite bossy or you could be being bullied um, or it could be that um, somebody is trying to give you advice about something and um, they think they know you well or they think they know your relationship or they think they know how things are, 
or how, how things are and they don't really so just be aware of uh, of that um, and people's egos or even your ego that may be coming to the fore at this time then in the ninth house we have mercury mind um, ninth house is the house of international travel or international things or foreign things all things to do with the world so you meeting the world or the world meeting you in some way um, uh, it's also about um, uh, higher education, university level education and adult education where you learn about the wider world. Um, it's also the understanding or the, the learning of philosophy, religion and belief systems of all kinds. Um, it's the house of intuition. It's the house of the deep finding the deeper meaning in things, wisdom, faith and so on. Um, it's also the house, as I said, of international travel, but also all, all things foreign. So this could be business related, or you could be publishing something because it's the house of publishing. It's also the house of teaching. Um, it's the house of um, public relations and promotional work. Uh, your relationship to your in-laws. Um, it's the house of the law. It rules the law and all legal things, higher court related. Um, so you could be studying the law or you maybe are a lawyer uh, and you're in this profession in some way. Um, okay, so as I said, it's, 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 it's deep intuition, seeking the truth, uh, understanding faith and wisdom and so on. Um, the, it's also got a very adventurous and exploratory um, uh, in, energy, the ninth house. So it is about adventure. It is about exploring, whether that's in the mind or whether you're traveling to do that. But it's long distance travel. So with this card coming in, it indicates that travel is coming in for you. It could be to do with learning. So you could be traveling to go to a course uh, or you're learning something or you're going to explore something or you're going to discover something. Um, but it's got a very uh, mental energy, this being Mercury, uh, which is the messenger of the gods. So it could be that in this house you may need to be spontaneous about something, but it could be quick thinking. You may have to have a quick reaction to something. It's also about using your humor and your wit at this time. <coughs> it's about intellect, learning. You may have to walk your talk in some way. Perhaps you're under undertaking a university level education and um, all of these aspects are coming in. It's very much about words and communication, this card. All words, all communication is highly, highly, highly important right now. Um, you could be asked to, to, to give a speech, um, or you could be receiving news about something, or, or a message about something, or you could be hearing gossip, or there could be a scandal of some sort going on in this house. Um, but I feel it is really, the focus is on the aspects of Mercury, which are to do with learning and understanding, and that is research, exchange of ideas, mental stimulation. Um, it also brings in technology and electronics, um, and you may be having upgrades, or you may be having to use that to further yourself in the ninth house in some way. It's also about cars, maps. Um, it's also about multitasking, flexibility, being flexible. Um, your friends may be very important to you at this time, or you could be making new friends uh, related to the ninth house. But travel looks like it's indicated, um, and usually we travel in the ninth house is international or long distance. So you may be going away to learn something, or you are learning something, or you are meeting people who have foreign ideas or are just different, and you're learning uh, from them, or you're trying to reach a wider audience, and that is around the world. Then in the 10th house, we have Solar Eclipse Revolution. So um, this is the other uh, sort of big card I was talking about. Uh, this is to do with the career. 10th house is the house of career, uh, fame, reputation, and also public status, your public status, which looks like it's going to be changing at this time. So you could be changing career. So you're going from being one thing to another. So your public status changes. Or you could be getting married. Uh, so you're going from single to married and so on. So with this card, Solar Eclipse Revolution, 10th uh, house also deals with um, um, authority figures. So you could have an authority figure in your life, uh, somebody close to you, or it could be uh, somebody at work, like a guru, or it could be somebody that you're admiring um, at this time, a, a, a public figure. 
It can also be um, uh, an authoritative uh, institution like the military or government, um, uh, anything to do with that. Um, so now um, this is a very ambitious house. Uh, with solar eclipse revolution coming in, it looks to me like you're going to be having some kind of change. It can either be a relocation or it's a change of career or a change of direction within that career or a change, some sort of change is coming for you. Changes are coming. It could be very sudden, like a jolt, you know, uh, or, or like a jolt or an upheaval. Um, but it really is going to be front and center for you. You simply can't escape it. It's going to come straight to your door. Um, and it's going to force you to be present in order to make those changes. So your attitude and the way you're handling these changes are going to be very, very important as to how those changes unfold for you. Because it can be devastating or it can be amazing. It's really all in your attitude. But it's a complete rearrangement. Um, as I said, possibly an upheaval or a very swift change. Um, you, you're going to be having to find your find your balance during the course of this change. But once you've mastered the, you know, your balancing and you've, uh, you know, you've uh, you've found your feet, then you have the opportunity to gain mastery of what it, whatever it is that's going on for you in this house. So it could be a change of direction or a life path or a relocation uh, or changing changes within your career or in your in your you know your how you're seen by the world. Um, endings and beginnings are in there for you. Um, the familiar falls away to, to make way for new things. Um, you may also, uh, if none of that is necessarily applying for you, it could be that you are required to fix or change something, but you're going to have to dive in really quick to sort it out. Fix or change something, and when you do that, when you actually take the initiative and take it on board, you will then create something much better. So it really is a transformative card. It is a revolution uh, and it's going to change a lot for you. And that is, I feel, going hand in hand with your sixth house, which is the house of work or lifestyle as well. Then in the 11th house, we have Taurus, I have. Uh, this is a growth card. This is about growing things. Uh, it's about accumulation. So this is coming into your um, 11th house, which is the house of friendships. Um, it's the house of uh, your contacts and networks. It's also the house of your um, self-oriented, you know, your own particular interests, your hobbies, but also your dreams, your visions and your aspirations for yourself. Um, it's also um, the house of uh, group activities that you may be involved in. So this is so societies, associations or like a club, even it could be a sports club or a book club any kind of group endeavor. Uh, it could be you in a group of companies even. But it's kind of got global or group consciousness attached to it. Um, it's also about trends in society, uh, monitoring that or you being sensitive to that. It's about global consciousness. It's about social reform. Um, any of those aspects come into the 11th house. So um, with Taurus, I have, as I said, this is a growth card. This is about growing things, accumulation. So you could be making new friends, um, you could be nurturing your existing friendships, or this could apply to your contacts and networks, or it could be to do with a hobby or an interest of yours, or your dreams. Um, but take advantage of any new opportunities to grow in this house. If you're relocating and if you're changing jobs or you're moving to change jobs or something like that, this is about taking advantage of anything that comes your way, which is going to give you the opportunity to grow. So you could be changing friends or you could be changing groups or, you know, with how you're interacting or with others, accumulating contacts and networks, new, new, new. But you have to, um, you really have to uh, try new things with this card. Action is required to try new things. So let go of stubborn or old attitudes or points of, you know, very fixed points of view about things. Um, you need to let go of those and let go of your fears about trying new things. All right. Because it's important for you. This is going to be very important for your growth. Um, action is required on this to try new things. Let go of your fears. And don't be afraid to mix and mingle and uh, and, and start really um, connecting with people, friends, contacts, networks, groups, whatever it is that's going to push you forward. Um, you know, you, it's also about grounding yourself in those circles or in your friendships and in your groups. Enjoy what is on offer. 
try new things, try new groups, uh, perhaps enjoy making new friends, try new things with them. Um, they have different experiences and life um, paths as well. So it's all about learning and, and understanding and enjoyment. But it's enjoy what is on offer in this house. Meeting influential people could be appropriate for you. You could be going into business where you need to make new contacts and networks. But it's all, a, all, all about accumulation and growth. That is what this card is about. And it's also about the arts, everything to do with the arts. You could be enjoying that as activities or as a group activity uh, or it's a hobby and interest of yours or it's a, an aspiration you have. But your contacts, contacts, contacts and your friends are going to be important and it's the nurturing and the harnessing of that to, 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 to give you that support and that grounding. Then in the 12th house we have Pluto transformation. 12th house is the house of your unconscious. So this rules a vast majority of our lives. It's your hidden motivations, your desires, your drives, your complexities, everything under the surface, everything that goes on behind the scenes. It's also got a very deep aspect to it. It's your spirituality. Uh, it's the house of your meditation, mysticism, healing, the obtaining of healing. You could be in a healing profession uh, because this house is about service to others as well. It's also the house of um, reflection and uh, withdrawal, retreat and so on, seclusion. Um, so you could be a very uh, you know, introverted person. The 12th house may be very strong for you. Um, it's also the house of um, escapism, everything that goes on with that. And uh, it could just be taking short breaks or getting away from things. But if it becomes too much, then it becomes an addiction. All kinds of addictions are ruled by the 12th house. It's also the house of resolutions and endings. Uh, and this is a beginnings and endings card. Um, so this is moving on from where you have been to where you want to go. And this is very much a theme of your, your chart. Um, it's also the house of karmic lessons coming in, which is another Pluto, uh, Plutonic aspect as well. It's the house of meeting twin flames. So... All of those aspects may be coming in for you. Other aspects could be uh, your interactions or your experiences in institutions of all kinds. So that can be a hospital or a prison or a university or a library or a government institution. Um, it's your experiences and what you learn while you're there. So um, with Pluto transformation, that's exactly what it's about. Pluto rules the underworld. So lots of things that have not previously been seen or have been hidden may come to the surface now at this time. So this could be your hidden emotions about things, your hidden feelings about things, or things that you just didn't acknowledge before. Um, it's, so it's a deeper analysis of, analysis of that. Um, anything that's hidden will come to the surface now. So what do you really want? That's what this card is on. What do you really want? And since this is the house of unconscious, it really is about your hidden motivations and desires. Analysis of these desires and how to bring them home, how to really, you know, harness what it is that you want. Letting go of the old to bring in the new. You cannot bring in new things if, you're, if your house is full of old things and there's no room for anything else. You have to take some things out to bring new things in. Endings and beginnings, very strong theme with this card and in this house. So it's also about, this card is also about renewal and regeneration. So possibly you are renewing something or you are experiencing a regeneration of some kind in this house. It could just even be with your inner self or a relationship or some kind of, um, you know, rebirth coming in for you. It's also Pluto uh, transformation may be bringing issues to do with sexuality. So um, entering, entering into a new relationship which is really going to transform a lot for you. And with that comes the sexuality. And this could be your, your deeper understandings of it or perhaps your programming around that, uh, what you learned from your parents, what you learned from your environment, what you learned growing up, what you've got used to, how you think you have, you know, how you've, uh, the, the sort of the, 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 how you've been operating for years. And now suddenly somebody comes along and transforms that for you. Now you have to shift your perspective and you have to do a deep analysis of yourself to understand how it is you need to transform in order to level up on this relationship. It could be anything to do with that or it could just be purely your unconscious about your life in general, about the things you want to do. So it's understanding of your deep self and your own needs 
and um, and the transforming of that, your desires, how to bring them home, how to move yourself forward in response to changes that are going on uh, in your chart this month. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that um, and uh, that it's going to work for you. Um, please don't forget to like and share or like and subscribe. And I hope you have a wonderful month and everything goes well for you. And I will see you next time. Take care.